You need to check out Phoenix Shaving Starter Kits. They come complete with the soap, the brush, and a two and a half month supply of blades. And the most important part of it, a all metal razor built to last generations. So, hey, you can donate it to one of your sons when they turn 18. Check out phoenixshaving.com and tell them that Gary from Night Dream said, hey, I want one. That's phoenixshaving.com now. Hey, Kevin, I, I need a razor. How about you? Yeah, I could so use a razor after hearing that. <laughs> yeah, I want to go out and buy one, you know. You know, when I was a kid, Kevin, you know, my dad gave me his razor that his father gave him. You know, these disposable razors really kind of suck. Well, <laughs> <laughs> well, what can I say? They do. I mean, you go to Dollar Tree and you buy like a package of Oh, you did it. You did another no-no. You mentioned a name. Uh, you want to be sued? Everybody wants to sue everybody nowadays. Pretty much. I know. <laughs> Valentina, you back. <laughs> yes. Okay. How about how about Dollar Wood? Yeah, yeah, Dollar Wood, Dollar <laughs> Store. Okay, that's fine. So anyway, getting back in the years, I, it's different for us. Like I said, the station's brand new for me and all the equipment. And I, I'm pushing wrong buttons and it's doing something I don't want it to do. So I, it's going to take me a day or two to get used to this. But, um, you know, what has been like some of the strangest things that uh, actually has happened in your profession? Uh, what's not been strange? Um Talking to this show on. <laughs> yeah, just all the weird things that happened. Well, um, some of the most memorable have um there was one guy, he was sitting at my table and um I said, you know, would you like to talk to your mother? And he said, Yeah and he goes, And could you tell her to just leave me alone and stop she was dead. And um he goes, Can you tell her just to stop hanging around me and stop bathing me? And right as he said that, my video camera shut off. Oh, wow. Well. Now, do you, like, uh, video the uh, encounters you have when with, with your customers or? What? Well, I mean, you get a client in. Do you make a videotape of it for they can have a copy of it and, you know? Uh, oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah, because sometimes um, I know that the stuff that they're hearing can be so overwhelming, so I don't want to sit there and... Um, I want the, the client to relax when they're here. I don't want them to have to sit and remember things. And that way, um, um, by me videotaping, they have that for posterity. And that's extra um, good, especially if um, loved ones come through doing the reading. Okay. I mean, now, let's say like my mom and my dad have naturally passed on. And, you know, there's times like I have dreams, like my mom is talking to me. Uh, not so much lately. It's been quite a few years, actually. But is is that something possible where, you know, a loved one can actually communicate to a person? Um, wait, the question was, again, if a loved one can communicate with a living? Yes, yes, yes. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Would you like to know how? Yeah, well, I, I sure would. I'm sure a lot of uh, the people out there would. Yeah, so the easiest way I tell my clients, because most people aren't um, as open as I am and others are, so the easiest way that um, the deceased or the ones on the other side will come through is it, um, through dreams. And not dreams, but dream messages, because that's actually the time your, your, um, your subconscious is open and you're not judging things and then you actually travel out of your body and you visit into a common space out into the universe and from there you have visiting time and then when you're done you drift back into your body and then you wake up and you're like oh wow I had a really cool dream but that dream actually turned out to be real that would be scary and almost like when somebody's you know like in the hospital and they they died on the operating table and uh, they started seeing loved ones and they saw their body and then all of a sudden, you know, the uh, medical staff revive them and they have this memory of, you know, seeing the operation going and then seeing, you know, their loved ones and stuff like that. 
Yes, that's actually the reason they get pulled back into their body and and live after an NDE or near-death experience is because it wasn't time for them to actually go. So near-death experiences is when your human life suddenly decides, oh, it's time to be done. And then you get up there and the universe is like, no, your number's not up yet. You have to go back down and be human. Oh, wow. So now going back to like missing persons, have you ever helped, you know, with the police or anybody find any missing people or remains or anything like that or, or help, you know, the family? Um, yeah, I've helped families. Families have contacted me with missing people. Um, I've worked on about eight cases so far. Um, the tricky thing is when I'm doing dead um, dead cases, not dead cases, um, well, dead files, um, cold cases, is that um, usually the police have given up. So, so getting the information and validation from the police is very difficult. So I have to go on information and validation from the family. Um, I'm confident enough to help police, but I, I, I haven't gotten around to asking any of the police. Um, when there's local cases of missing people or murder cases, I secretly take them on myself and um, start pulling information, and then um, I'll write my information down, and then weeks later after they caught the murderer or not, um, I will sit and check it against my own information. That way I can get more confident before I go to the police. Uh, just because um, the police are working more and more with psychics, so they're getting the respect. But um, some, some, you know, police still aren't there yet. But oh, I would yeah. love to assist um, police on a live case. But I usually get um, to work on um, more cold cases. Well, have what well, has your? Um, well, how can I say it? Uh, what has your hits been on on cases like that where you helped? You know, try to find a a missing person or, you know, a deceased person? You know, it's weird because somebody else asked me what's my hit ratio. I've never been tested for hit ratio, um, so I don't know. Um, however, um, the the information that I have gotten, um, car colors, hair color, um, locations, how they were murdered, uh, murder weapons, Clues, very odd clues. One one time I got a um, paint can, and it turned out that a one of the murder victims had been chopped up and put in a paint can. Oh, wow. So I know that my information um, that is pretty accurate. I haven't really sat and said, okay, if I got 10 clues, how many out of 10 are correct? But um, I even shock myself sometimes with the information I get. Um, in fact, a lot of the times there's never – a time I'm not shocked at how, how accurate I can be. Um, I'm not tooting my horn. I'm just being factual here um, because sometimes I swear the information, I'm, I'm like, I, I, I question it myself because it's just bizarre information, but all these little bits and pieces I get, I can put together and get clues. I mean, no, no psychic gets the entire story. You know, we get bits and pieces of things, and from there we can put together. So it, it's like... Um, like life or the mystery or the murder, whatever, is a, a, a big puzzle layout on a table with several pieces missing. I get the, those pieces and pop them into the puzzle and, com, you know, help complete it. But I just bring something. I mean, I don't solve the complete crime, but I help bring other pieces of clues into it, which are crucial. Now, what's the difference between what you you do than a remote viewer? does um well i can also remote view um i'm still fine tuning that but sometimes i'm able to walk around i can transport um port myself over to people's houses or places and i can walk around there and get details as well um it's not my stronger point i won't lie but i i i have been able do that and walk around my clients' houses and describe different things in their house. And they're like, you're describing my toilet right now or my, my, my shower curtain or, and I'm, I'm like, I am. <laughs> so that, that, that and I, I don't intentionally set out to do that. I just suddenly am, am transported over there and able to do that. 
Yeah, I mean, some of the remote viewers, you know, I guess the government had them for quite a few years, and then they finally disbanded uh, their group. But, I mean, they were actually remote viewing of, you know, like uh, what's going on in other countries, uh, what's going to happen, you know, with the sun, all this type of stuff. So, I mean, some of this stuff, I mean, it can get really, you know, a little bit scary. Well, and it, that's the thing. That's why the CIA was doing that, and that's because with that type of powers, you can go and spy on anything, which, of course, in the wrong hands gets used for war and all this stuff and the enemy. And, um, I mean, I suppose if I really wanted to, I could hop over and get the code for the security <laughs> um, in the bank at the safe. But, um, you know, I, I'm not going to do those kind of things. Um, but in the wrong hands, I think those kind of powers, you know, are dangerous, and that's why that remote viewing is something used for, like, the CIA and, um, you know, the secret agency and things like that. Like I said, um, I'm still training my brain to do that. I usually do it on accident. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I don't even really know what I'm doing. I just can do it without the training. So you, I can only imagine how good I'd be if I trained. But um, it's still something I enjoy doing. Yeah. Now, I noticed like on your emails, it, it, you know, I've been getting, they don't come out with your name. They come out with the, uh, the ghost girls or girl, go, girls, ghost something. Uh, what is that? Yeah. Uh, so when I was doing my own paranormal show and shopping that, um, my show is called ghost girl. So, um, I made that email for ghost girl crew for, you know, the cameramen and everybody or like, the whole production crew would just be Ghost Girl crew and all the information. So I kept that, and then that's just where um, psychic requests or any paranormal shows. I still get calls to be on paranormal shows or um, pilots and, and different shows that they're, they're formulating. So, um, so yeah, that, that's my email for that. <laughs> yeah, one of my guests coming up next month actually was on a TV show. That's been on for quite a few years, and he's no longer on it himself. But he he was really really upset, and uh, basically said that net the network would you know if they went out and they were sent out to investigate a house or a building or you know a circumstance, uh, old prison for example, and nothing happened, then I guess the network would tell him to go back and fake it. And he said after a couple of years of that, he said he just couldn't do it anymore. Yeah, that's that's pretty much true. Um, you know, a lot of these paranormal shows, in order to get a good show, you would have to have thousands of hours of footage, which is a pain in the butt to ne- um, to edit, as well as cameras at every corner, because unfortunately, ghosts act when they want to. You, this is not an actor, you know, so you cannot get a ghost to perform on cue, and most things are not caught. So without, like, 50 cameras around running tape 24-7 or motion activated, you're going to miss most of this. So um, for a low-budget paranormal show, there's only a few cameras, and they, they go in for a bit, and they hope to catch something. If they don't, they have to fabricate it and fake it. And that's unfortunate what's happened with a lot of paranormal shows is that there isn't a lot of good footage. But in order to keep going season after season, a lot of this does have to be, um, which unfortunately is, is, I don't know. <laughs> I know. They, 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 they just, you know, and that does damage, you know, from like to even like my show, it does probably damage to what you do because I mean, you know, it gets people thinking like, well, Hey, everybody's fake. Well, you know, I can honestly tell you, I've been involved in the paranormal uh, situations now for almost 40 years and, uh, yeah, I've seen a lot of fake stuff, but I've seen a lot of stuff that I know that uh, it wasn't faked, you know? I mean, it's strange well, things. And exactly, and that's the thing. And when you've seen enough of the fake stuff, um, and, and I can see, I can see, and I'll, I'll watch these paranormal shows. I will freeze things and rewind frame by frame. And you can tell by people's reactions and things, you know, that's a dead giveaway. If people are genuinely scared, then more than likely it, it, it wasn't planned. Um, and there is some amazing footage. I happened to catch um, some stuff on Amazon. Amazon has been releasing a lot of um, 
it's opened up uh, the um, the source now for where you can just um, put your own.